If this water was any colder, it would be ice. And I'm about to jump into it. The reason I'm about to jump into it is because I want to find out something about what happens to my body when I get fully immersed in cold water. The truth is, you can survive in water this temperature for about half an hour. But first of all, you have to survive the first 30 seconds of being in that water because that's when you get the problems. And the reason you get the problems is because of a hormone called adrenaline. And that's secreted when you get covered in cold water and it makes you panic. Now to do my experiment, I need someone who's been in cold water loads of times before. Andy Torbett seems like a good choice. And I also need someone who's hardly ever been in cold water before. In this case, me. When you jump in very, very cold waters, you have this shock response. And you have two different problems. You have from your skin a huge number of nerves sending adrenaline to your heart, which speeds it up. But from the nerves in your face, you have a dive response, which actually wants to slow your heart down. So you have two conflicting nerves going into your heart. And we think that's what gives people heart attacks when they jump into water. Chris is interested in how much you can control these responses using the power of the mind, and Andy is going to be his guinea pig. During his time in the military, he did a lot of cold water swimming, and Chris wonders if it might make him better at extreme immersion. You can increase your chances of survival if you fall into cold water by being psychologically prepared and also by being physically prepared. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's pioneering work. Fun would not be the word I would use, but let's just get it done. Okay. Doug's looking out for the guy's safety, but with the luxury of a dry suit. Look at Doug. He, I mean, he is dressed up like a seal, isn't he? That kit works. Does I it? know that kit works. Does it? Whereas your pants do not. You haven't seen my pants, mate. I'm getting a little bit nervous now. <laughs> They're both wearing monitors that will record their breathing and heart rates. That's very impressive. That is very, very, very impressive. How are you feeling? Can you talk to me? Yeah. Okay. Just about. Can you give me your name? Yeah. Can you even swear? <laughs> the big key there is to prepare your mind genuinely. I don't want to sound all yeah. no airy fairy, but you just get in your head, it's going to be cold, it's going to be hot. Accept it and just take charge of yourself. Now it's Chris's turn. Cold hands. Cold hands, Tim. Ready? Three, two, one. How is it, Vic? I have. I can't even swear. Painful. Your head. It hurts. It hurts. I'm okay now. Oh, oh. Oh. Ice cream headache. The worst ice cream headache I've ever had. Well, let's get back to the warm boat and download the data, because I think my heart went completely bananas. <laughs> so the results here are really good, actually. When we get in the water, your heart rate is 145, my heart rate is about 175, so much, much higher than yours. Breathing rate, your breathing rate goes up to 30, my breathing rate goes up to 40. So, in all senses, my kind of panic, cold shock response is much, much more extreme than yours. That, for me, is the key thing. If you're psychologically prepared and relaxed and keep your head together for that 30 seconds like you did, yep. then you're much more likely to survive. And you'd be better able to survive longer in cold water because you're carrying a bit of excess insulation. That's exactly right. I mean, this, this is my survival strategy. <laughs> if I can't stay calm, I'll do that. 
So we could tell from Andy's heart rate and his breathing rate when he was in the water that he was much less panicked than I was. And that means he's more likely to survive. So the important thing is not to practice getting into cold water lots, but remember if you do fall in, don't panic and you'll have much longer than you think to get yourself out.